Welcome back to the studio. Uh, it's Thursday. It's it's half seven, just gone half seven. Um, I'm glad you're all here. Uh, today's live stream, um, if you check the title, the title actually changed twice. Uh, uh, we were going to do monsters and create a kind of um, a graphic t-shirt design with monsters. Uh, we mentioned that in our last live stream, but at the last minute I decided to change it. Uh, because we're a bit strapped for time today, so I thought I'd do a nice little short, quick stream. Um, and we're going to do that all around, um, colouring up black and white images using Photoshop. Now, but again, we're going to base that around doing more sort of comic orientated artwork. So black and white sketches, black and white um, things you may have got from uh, maybe Mid Journey or things you've rendered, sketch, scanned in, old photos maybe. So we're going to be using Photoshop for this one. Um, and some of the kind of sort of overlooked filters that are in Photoshop. Uh, obviously Photoshop can do pretty much anything you want. You just got to find the right place to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some neural filters. They are relatively new. So I thought it'd be good just to go through those to show you what they can do. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be a really fun, short kind of uh, stream today. So let, with that further ado, let's just kind of jump in. Uh, Let's go before we do that though. Let's go over to let's do the usual thing. So, camera one, you're working today. We always do this because something is usually not working. I'm keeping on my, my, my uh, microphone today because I noticed it was kind of I've got to get this sorted. It kind of peaks now and again. So, camera on, camera, camera wrong. Camera one, you're looking good. Camera two, let's turn, let's see where you are. Camera two, you're over here. There you are, looking good. That's all working. Um, we don't want to be rolling the credits. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Uh, let's go to the desktop. Desktop is working. Brilliant. So there's Photoshop. We're going to be using a bit of Photoshop today. But before we actually even go anywhere near Photoshop, let's go to Adobe Bridge because that's where we're keeping all of our work at the moment. Here we go. Uh, so I've just pulled together. I've, I've been going through kind of my, not archives, but all the stuff I haven't used yet just to grab all the black and white images that I can find. So we've got a nice selection here to have a go with. Um, so I thought it'd just be fun just to color up some of these really quickly, you know, not spending too much time on it. Let's make this nice and easy and quick and just something that everyone can do. So in here, like I said, I've got a selection of different things. Some of these are from uh, Mid Journey uh, and just leftover remnants from past projects and things I've just not used yet. Some of these have also come from uh, Prome AI. We mentioned that in the last stream. Prome AI is kind of a newcomer and I've got mixed feelings about it. I used to love it. I thought it was the best thing ever, but then it kind of had a bit of a blip and it it just didn't seem to work properly. Um, it's still good to so check it out um, and it's, it's relatively cheap as well. So what we'll do is we'll start with a couple of these. OK, and this is going to be just so quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. We just want Photoshop to do all of the work for us okay so let's just pick one of these uh i'm thinking we start well why don't we start with the one we've got here okay um let's have a look what we're dealing with here um i don't think this one has been upscaled yet uh, this was an idea for a music concert poster so yeah that's not been upscaled we just so we need to fix that um let me open that in uh finder here because to upscale this using bridge we actually need a jpeg version of it so bridge can up make jpeg files that's fine but uh finder is quicker so we're just going to right click on the image go to quick actions and just choose convert image we want to do it at actual size we'll convert it into a jpeg perfect so when we jump back to bridge there's the option for us so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take this and you may have seen this before we do it all the time on this channel so if we want to upscale an image what we do is we just right click on it look for the option that says camera raw at the top here or opening camera raw remember this will only work with certain file formats jpeg being one of them and the other one being a tiff format and cam and raw files as well it's kind of okay with those because it's camera raw um but we're not using those we're not we're not doing professional photography here so we'll go into there and all we're going to do here is we're not really going to change anything we're just literally going to right click go down to enhance there we go we don't need to do anything here camera raw does the whole thing for us so we don't need to worry about it at all okay just make sure super resolution is ticked and then we'll click enhance 
and it's done it so if we look at the thumbnails here this is the original this is the after doesn't appear to be much difference in the two however if we click on the first one and we zoom into her face that's kind of the default zoom level for that one but the one we've upscaled we'll do the same again we can get right in there straight into her face there okay much closer quality is the same it did improve it uh, as it was upscaling we'll, we'll improve the quality even more in uh, photoshop so let's click open that's going to open directly in photoshop now obviously this isn't a true black and white image there are some hints of red in here um so we're not, we're not too worried about it the filter will still work even though it's um got a bit of red in there and it's actually a color image but let's fix a couple of things so we'll use the um, neural filters to do this we want to do two things here we want to improve the quality so get rid of what we call the jpeg artifacting so if you ever have a jpeg if you zoom into it uh, let's go back there that's a good level you can see the artifacting around some of the neutral colors and the whites and we just want to get rid of it because it looks awful so we need to get rid of that first of all and then we'll work on doing an actual color up now the coloring side of things i'm hoping it's going to be pretty quick okay so we can get through a few of these just so i can i can actually put them to bed and that's it i'm done with those and we can move on so what we're going to do um, again, because we're not 100% 100 sure what's going to happen to this, remember, right-click on your layer, convert it to a smart object, because that way it will make smart filters. And if you've got a smart filter in Photoshop, you can always go back to the original and change it again. If you don't do that, you won't have that ability. So what we'll do now is look for those neural filters. They're in the top here with all the other filters. So we go filter. Uh, there they are. They are top of the list. So we go straight into that, literally just click it. You've got quite a few things in here you can do. OK, so th if this is the first time you've used smart filters or sorry, not smart filters, but neural filters in Photoshop, you might need to download some of these things. You might have little cloud symbols next to some of the filters. Just click on it, download the filter and, and kind of away you go. So the first thing we want to do is JPEG artifact removal. We're, we're going to do that one first. We've done it before. It just improves the image quality. So it's going to have a think about it down here. So depending on the size of the image and how much kind of detail it's got in it and how much artifacting the filter finds, this can take a few seconds. Uh, so this says nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And remember, these are Apple seconds, so they never, never true to life. But if we zoom in on that now, we should be able to see. Let's get on close on her face there. The difference. So let's have a look. Let's go about there. And what we'll do is turn the filter on and off, not literally turn it on and off because then it'll have to re-render itself. But down here, there's a little preview. You, you can toggle on and off. So let's do a before. That's where we were before. And then let's zoom in a bit and make sure you guys can see it. Uh, we might have to get right up a nose there. OK, <laughs> it's just the compression on YouTube hides all of this. So you, you can't see the difference. Uh, but we'll turn it back on again. And there you go. See how that smoothed it out. It looks a lot better. That's just improving the quality of the image, first of all. But we'll click OK on that. Let me just show you what it does. Um, that will. Whoop, where have we gone? We've disappeared off over there on the screen. Come on. Back you come. There you go. So on our layers here, we actually have the original image. And because we made it a smart object underneath that, we have a smart filter and there's the um, JPEG artifact to remove all neural filter. OK, but let's go back into it because we want to do some coloring. We want to get some color on her. So we'll double click on it. We'll go back into it. That's already turned on. It's going to have another think about it because because Photoshop and that's what it likes to do. Who knows? Uh, but what we'll also do is while we're here, um, over on this side of the screen here, we have all of our filters and we can switch on as many as we want. However, the more you switch on, the little slower it's going to be and the more prone it is to kind of crashing. And we don't like it when things crash. So all we're going to do is literally come to the bottom here here where jpeg artifact removal is and just kind of work our way up because we're going to hit one called colorize now i'm not going to click it yet because usually it's pretty quick in what it does now this is like fully automated um, and what it's made for is black and white photo restoration so you know if you've got any of those like really 
let me just move my headphones back they're slipping so you know if you got any like really old photos of uh, your grandparents and back in the day you know that sort of thing the idea is you scan them in here and colorize them and uh, this filter adds color to it we're just using it for sort of a, a manga illustration here and it will do it just as well um let's just turn it on okay you ready for this switch it on it has to think about it and it just applies color for us and we we haven't done anything okay that, that has done it for us um let's move her over here there we go so it's literally just done the whole thing for us with one click okay we didn't have to do anything however there's more we can do so if we scroll down here we've got some extra sliders we do also have color profiles so i was test i wasn't testing i was I just i suppose i was testing i was trying these out again earlier i've used it many times before but i've noticed a lot with some of the finer details inside the neural filters they don't seem to work properly at the moment photoshop i think you need an update adobe get on it get this fixed because if i try to choose one of these let's say i like the sound of uh, retro purple yellow what does that do at the top here it actually says we've temporarily disabled this filter because of an error it only happens when you choose one of their presets so let's reset that back. Okay, there we go. And once you reset it, it goes away again. All right, so watch out for that while you're using it. For now, I mean, by all means, try the profiles. They may work on your computer. Um, don't seem to want to do it on mine. But anyway, we've got some sliders here. So what I can do is just increase the saturation level if I want to, maybe make it a little bit brighter there. Uh, alter the balance between cyan and red as well. So maybe if we drop the, it down more towards the cyan, cyan, I combine the word cyan and end then. So, <laughs> so what we what we want to do is bring the color slider more towards the cyan end of the, the the spectrum. Okay, get it away from the reds and put some more blues and cyans in there. So if we bring that down, it's just going to cool the image down a bit. I think it does look just a little bit too hot for my liking. Um, and then we can do the same with things like magentas. Um, I think we've got quite a bit of green in here already. So let's bring it away towards the magenta end. It's just to, again, put some pinks in it, but not too much warmth. And maybe take the blues up a bit. Too much. Uh, yeah, maybe bring that cyan back again. But just to get it, that's looking nice. But yeah, it's just to get a nice color balance on there. So straight away, we've got a nice colored image and all we had to do would click a few things that is it okay straightforward really simple let's do another one so we're going to click okay on that so that's number one i like it let's do the next one so we'll go back to bridge let's pick something else to do let's do something a little bit more detailed uh than her maybe something more photographic looking um what have we got what should we use um that one could be interesting. This is kind of part of the mech head series I was working on. So half cyborg, um, half person, you, you get the deal. So again, this one I believe needs upscaling. So let's just reveal that in Finder and we'll do a quick upscale on that. You know, if we're going to do these things, we might as well do it properly. So we'll just do a quick action here and convert the image over to a JPEG. That's fine. Back to bridge, right click on the image and it's all process. It's just the same thing over and over again. Now I'm probably not really going to use these for that much. All I'm doing is just um, having a little play around with it just to see if there's anything we can do that we might be able to use on something. These will probably all end up on Instagram. Um, so what we'll do again is open in camera raw and we'll repeat the same thing. We'll right click on it. We'll go down to uh, enhance. And just before that, uh, actually, let's just click cancel on that for one second. This is not anything to do with you guys, but um, I'm going to close that as well. Uh, let's just click cancel on that. Every time I do this, and if you follow the stream often enough, you know I always forget this bit. I like to record the screen using just QuickTime so I can then edit that as a video later on. And I always forget to do it because I like to do little shorts of these things. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can go back and watch a short later on. But unless I record the screen, we can't we can't do that and i always forget so if you're regulars on a stream just put it in the comments say don't forget to put the um screen recording on uh, so yeah okay let's do that uh, so we'll have a new uh screen recording i should really have a checklist pinned to the side of my screen um are you recording yes you are i should yeah like, i should have a checklist if i go is the microphone working yes ticket is the camera working yes 
carry on. Is the other camera working? <laughs> yes, carry on. Um, but now it's recording, so we're safe. We can do more quicker things later on for you guys. All right, so um, yeah, so now it's uh, uh, enhancement time. So we'll right click on the image. We'll go down to, oh, sorry, up to opening camera raw. As before, not a lot to do here apart from right click, down to enhance. Super resolution is turned on. This is just what I wanted. We'll click enhance. And in perfect English, we have a more bigger image. Um, <laughs> I want to see how the um, closed captions translates that. Yeah, it upscales the image so it's bigger than it was before. It's just kind of forcing in that resolution. And the way it's doing it is kind of compensating with the size of the image. But anyway, the original, let's zoom into the side of the head here with all the detail on it. We can get that close with the upscaled image. We'll do the same thing. It takes us in that close. Great more detail well no not more detail it's the same detail but it's better quality so let's open that into photoshop same thing as before i don't know what we're going to do i want the ability to go back and change things so i'll right click on the layer convert it to a smart object okay because we're testing things out we don't know whether it's going to work or not uh, let's get a bit closer and then what we'll do is go back into those filters do those two things that we wanted to do before back to neural filters and the first thing is JPEG artifact removal. We'll switch that on. Um, let that do its thing. Okay, like we say, it's got some Apple seconds to tick down. While it's doing that, we'll grab a quick cup of coffee. There we go. Hopefully you guys have all got your uh, beverage of choice to chill out with. All right, so that's done the JPEG artifact removal. So I'm going to trust it, and I, I think it's done a good job. Well, let's have a quick zoom in, shall we? Come on, let's get in there. Uh, yeah, that's not looking too bad. So let's, this is the after. Let's switch on before. Look at all that jpeg -iness. All right, so we don't like that. Put that filter back on. Much better. And let's do. Let's see how quickly Photoshop can color this in for us. Okay. Let's just switch on colorize. Fingers crossed. Photoshop will just do it. And it's done it. It's as simple as that. It's got the skin tones in there. Let's put a bit of red around the mouth here. Now, what it has actually done, because it's seen this as kind of a head, it's not really picking up the other detail. We've got white down here where it, she kind of changes into a robot, which is great. You can kind of see, if I bring it over here, you can kind of see where the skin breaks through on the armor here or um, the, the exoskeleton, whatever you want to call it. But I think we need some extra color around here maybe the machinery needs to have a bit of color on there just like i don't know maybe like hints of blue perhaps with like neon lights flashing off of it i don't know let's try it because we can do things like that in here as well all we've got to do is go over to this little gray image over on the right here um, because at the moment photoshop's doing all the work okay however we might want to do the work or add things into it. So I'm thinking, let's add some color in here. Let's let's add something else in. Um, it's actually missing a little bit on her cheek here. So maybe we need to add that in as well. Uh, but anyway, let's click here on this bit of metal. OK, uh, and the color can be, I don't know, let's go down. Let's have a bit of a turquoisey blue type of colors. Yeah, somewhere around here, not too bright. Let's get it to tone nicely with what we're doing. We can always change these afterwards. So we'll click there. And what it will do is it'll add that in to my my image and I might bring the color strength up a little bit. Yeah, that's looking good. Man, we can move it around and place it in different places. Maybe we want another one of those over here. So we'll add that in as well. We'll click another one. Yeah, that's looking interesting. OK, let's, ca let's carry on. Now, the annoying thing here is you can't zoom in on this black and white image to try and get really close into the detail. So it's kind of working in a pretty small area here so i'm thinking yeah something like that we don't really want it to bleed over into the skin area which is what it tends to want to do you can't get precision with this tool okay this is one of the you can get kind of sort of precision with this because again remember what it's actually designed for and that's restoring black and white photos and we're just using it to color up uh, some more sort of like comic art more than anything so again we'll add some more down here i think down on this machinery on her neck uh maybe we'll bring the overall saturation levels up as well but let's carry on with this blue you can add in as many colors as you want here um, i'm just kind of working with the blue for now let's add in a few of those we'll put that down here 
Alrighty, that's looking good. I'm, we're losing a bit of skin tone here. It's kind of lightening off. So maybe we put something on her skin there. Not blue or turquoise or whatever you want to call this. Let's try and mix more of a, a flesh tone here. So we'll go down. Flesh tones are always difficult using this one. There we go. Let's go kind of there. Let's see what it does. That's good. That's pulling that back in. Uh, that's not looking too bad, actually. And because we've got that skin tone now, let's add it in in a few other places. Because like I say, it's missing it on the cheek here. So we'll duplicate this. You don't need to um, do anything because that was the last color we used. As soon as we put down another color pin, it's going to pick up on that color, hopefully. Now, I think it might struggle with this bit here because it's. I think it's seeing it as the background. Let's just keep an eye. Uh, yeah, you see how it's bleeding over into the background. Uh, but that's fine because we could put a white uh, color dot down. Let's, let's call these color dots, shall we? We could put a white color dot down to compensate for that. Yeah, it's going to be... Oh, there we go. That's not bad. Okay, let's add a, a white one just here to see if we can sort of counteract that. Yeah, that's kind of working. Again, it's that problem of not having the precision with this. We can get kind of precise, but not 100%. All right, so it's just, yeah, we can live with that. All right, let's put some more down here on her neck because I think we need some more skin tones down here. Yeah, let's put one there. And yeah, we'll put one there as well. And again, you can increase the strength on these. So if you want them to shine through a bit stronger, bring that strength up. Yeah, good. And we'll have another one down here, I think. That's not looking bad. Maybe on the shoulder here. Maybe that can be sort of skin coming through. Now on the... The actual shoulder shoulder yeah that's not looking too bad okay let's carry on i think before we do karen let's scroll down here let's bring the overall saturation level up on the whole thing so let's bring that up because it's going to be stylized it doesn't have to be realistic so we can just bring the um the style of the uh, stylization the um the saturation levels up to make it look a little bit more interesting so we can do that and then what we'll also do is maybe alter the balance between um the blues and magentas and things like that as well. So maybe we can bring the strength down into the kind of cyan level. If you guys have been following long enough, you know I've got this thing about having nice blue turquoise tones with reds and whites, and that's kind of where I want to take it. And that's not looking too bad. You could see it from the distance there. When you see it from a distance, you actually get a whole different feel for things. Um, let's bring you back to the desktop. Okay, so yeah that's not looking too bad yeah we need some more blues on it though so we'll go back to where our blue uh color dots are and we'll add in a few more i think we need some coming over the shoulder here where this bit of whatever is yeah that's good looking good and again over here there's some equipment type thing here as well whatever that is and uh, we need some more skin tone so we'll add that in there on her shoulder yeah there we go and can we get this little sort of wire that's coming around her cheek there do you reckon we can get that let's give it a go let's try and put a little color dot on there so, oh no i don't want a skin tone no 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 i want a, I want a blue thank you sort of sort of doing it it's bleeding over into the other bits but i think if we bring the strength down on that we might get away with it so we'll bring that down yes keep going keep going yeah, that's kind of got it. It's kind of got it. Okay. I think we need to just bring one of these skin tones over here, though. Yes, that's what we need. Maybe under her chin, that's looking a bit red. Possibly, but now we've lost the, the warmth in the lips. I think we need that. So I think maybe we go for the lips and we have a bit of tint on there of maybe pinkish, not too pink. Maybe more red than pink and maybe not that strong somewhere around here let's try that yeah that's better it's bringing the warmth back in there and we'll have the same down here as well too much come on back up we don't want it bleeding out over that way it'd be really nice if we could have more control over the precision on this yeah but again you've got to bear in mind this is going to be a stylized image so don't worry about it too much okay just just go with it uh we'll add some more color in here as well I'm, uh, we're losing everything is kind of going too blue now so i think maybe we need another tone in there just to help lift it uh so what shall we go with shall we go with sort of shall we go for greens shall we go for purples come on guys give me a bit of input here i'm thinking i've got purple in my mind that we can add sort of down the side here don't know whether that's going to do what i need it to but 
Let's try it. Let's add them in. I know I want some extra colors, but I just don't know what yet. So we'll add in a few more color dots. Uh, we'll have one. Let's start at the top here, I think, uh, where all this detail is. Well, I'm going to put one there. But this one, maybe. Let's try, let's try green first of all. Let's try more of a green color. I think it might look a bit plain and a bit boring, so I might have to go down the purple type of route. I don't know. Um, possibly it's, it's giving me Nurgle type vibes there. Uh, let's go back up to more purple. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, check that. That looks good. See how that's kind of interacting there. It's almost giving this rainbow sort of effect. Quite like the sort of cyberpunk aesthetic on that. That looks pretty good. Good. All right, let's, let's do another one of those. I, quite, I like the purple. Let's have another one maybe underneath that down here mm, that could be a bit strong let's move it further down yeah okay let's put it underneath on the side not underneath there on the side yes yeah, so it kind of we've got a bit of a, a sort of trail going down here now so maybe again we'll add another one underneath it here down here on some of this equipment yeah let's add i'm, I'm liking the purple maybe another one just there maybe another one down here they've almost got to tell a story with this and say look the purple is sort of flowing through from the side of the head down through the rest of it um, and again i think maybe underneath the chin or even over here on the shoulder we could probably put something uh maybe maybe not yeah okay good it's looking interesting and that's what this is all about. You know, we're not after perfection here. This we, We're never going to get perfection with this. We're going to get something interesting and stylized. And I think that's what we've got to keep bearing in mind is it's, it's not going to be precision here. So we'll add that on. That looks good. Not bad. Not bad. Um, and we'll also add on. Um, well, I think, you know what? I think we're pretty much there. This bit under her chin, I'm wondering whether we do something with that because there's not actually any color under there. So we'll double, we'll click on the, one of the blue ones and bring that over. And then what we might have to do the separation here, we might have to bring in another skin tone just to help with the separation on that. Yeah, that works. And maybe we want another flesh tone kind of, can we put one in there? Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at all these little gaps and adding in flesh tones to see if we can actually um, do something with that to try and get the blend a little bit more harsh on there. Um, that's looking good. I think let's bring some more of this purple in there. Uh, well, do we need one? Uh, let's add one just under. The, let's see what it looks like underneath the chin here. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. It could look awful. Yeah, it does look awful. However, yeah, if we put it in there, that looks like it's flowing down the side of her head and around. Let's just take this strength down on that one. Ooh, interesting. And that makes making the one on her head look too strong. So maybe we knock that bit back as well. I'm wondering what happens if we drop one here. I think we tried that anyway. You know what? I, can't, I like that. And with this strength turned all the way down, we're getting some nice subtle blends happening now. So again, this, this is just Photoshop coloring it for us. We're barely doing anything. We don't have to get paintbrushes out and work into this in great detail. We can just click and add points in. Yeah, maybe we'll have one there. And because we've turned the strength right down, that's actually really helping with the color blends here. So I can add quite a few more in. I'm really annoyed I cannot zoom in on this image. Though. It's super annoying. Can I, if I stretch this out, is that the biggest we can go? That is the biggest we can go. Okay, fine. Whatever, whatever. Um, Adobe, you need to improve that. We need to be able to make that image bigger or at least zoom in on it or do something. Yeah, I think... We could probably get away with another color on this, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we need another blue up here. Yeah, because I don't want too much of that purple in there. It's overpowering everything. Maybe just add a hint of it in there. And the strengths come down. Let's take that down. Hey, Lola, welcome back to the stream. Yeah, you missed Tuesday. Our oh, Tuesday was the best stream ever. You know, you missed absolutely everything. It was like, oh my God. And I'm, I might just take it off the website so no one can watch it ever again. Um, <laughs> um, 
you know what? I can't even remember. Oh, Tuesday was uh, we did we did um, we did a graphic that was called uh, Moshi. Um, yeah, check it out. It's worth a look. Uh, okay, so let's add in a couple more down here. And then I think we'll move on to another image. We can always come back to this and edit it and do other things with it. Uh, but I think that's not looking too bad. The only thing I might do here is th with this one is either bring the strength up or warm it up a little bit. So let's put some more warmth into that. Let's bring more red into that tone. Yeah, that's that's better. It's really subtle, but that's made a massive change. Cool. All right. So let's zoom in on that. Let's have a look what's happening. So we've got some nice color in there, just nice stylized sort of color. And we, we hardly had to do anything with that. The side of the mouth here looks a bit red. Let's see if we can add another one of these in. Yeah, it's kind of look, yeah, it's kind of going a bit greeny there, isn't it? Let's bring some more warmth into it again. Just something very subtle. That works. There's a bit of weirdness happening underneath the chin here. So that tone I might bring down here. Or oh, maybe not. It'd actually look better without it. Good. All right. So again, remember what we said. We're never going to get perfection with this. We're just after this stylized, quick inking color, almost like a wash over our artwork. I'm happy to leave the background white. I think that looks kind of good. But then we just click OK. Um, why am I trying to click up there? I'll need to click down here. I'm looking at the other screen. We'll click OK on that. And again, that sits in our artwork just as a smart filter. So if I ever need to go back and change it, I can do it. I can just double click on it and away we go. But again, you guys know um, I'm a big fan of playing around with extra color on top of this. So I'm thinking maybe we do something with um, some of the color adjustments on here as well. So what we'll do is we'll jump onto those through our layers. We'll go into our adjustment layers. Uh, let's ignore all of this stuff here. And what we'll do is we'll just go down to color lookup. And we'll choose one of these. Now, I have some go-to things in here uh, that I like to use. So maybe we'll go to the go-to options first. One of those is three strip look. There we go. So it just pops the colors a little bit more. And what I might do is duplicate that and we'll have another one. Yes, we're not going to name these things. And maybe, again, I'm liking the candlelight option at the moment too strong let's knock it back a bit because it's a layer i can do that i can just grab the opacity and go yoink take it down a bit so we've got the nice pop of color from the previous one but then we've also got the warmth from this one as well so there we go there's where we were so we started there we added that one then we added that one and i think that looks a lot better okay cool right let's save that one and then we'll move on to the next one like i said there's a few on here i just wanted to really try this just to see how far we can push it so let's go back to bridge. Let's open the next one. Um, so yeah, you can really see the difference there if I put these next to each other. Da, 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 da. There, there we go. So we can see the difference between the, the where we started and where, where we ended up. Good. Uh, yeah, let's try a different one. Um, I have never tried a car before. Mm, shall we, uh, let's try a car. Let's see what that does. Uh, we know it can do people. We know it can do faces, but can it do a car? Again, we need a JPEG of this, so what we'll do is we'll convert it to JPEG. Uh, remember, right-click on it, through Finder, Quick Actions, Convert Image. Actual size JPEG, convert the image, back over to Bridge. And as before, I know Bridge can convert images, however, it's so much quicker doing it that way. Uh, right-click again, open in Camera Raw, let's upscale it to get the maximum amount of detail in here. Uh, as before, right-click, Enhance. Super resolution, thank you very much. And open it in Photoshop. Good. And then what I'll also do here, because I think for something like this, let's add some more space at the top. Let's add some more stuff up there, shall we? So for this, let's use the crop tool. Remember, if you need to add extra space to an image, use the crop tool in reverse. Okay, let's just drag that up. Yep. Let's give it quite a bit of space. And we'll have a little bit more down at the bottom here as well. Why not? Maybe we should pick an actual aspect to work to. Uh, maybe this. Let's do um, an eight by. No, let's do a four by six. Um, yeah, that'll do. At least we've got something, uh, an actual ratio to work to. Uh, but when we upscale for this one, because I want some extra stuff in here, I'm going to do a generative expand. I'm not going to tell it what to do. I'm going to let it do its own thing. And let's see what it does. Do like a generative expand. 
Again, let Photoshop do the work. That's why we have these programs. This is just let Photoshop do it. Beautiful. Okay, so it's put some extra road in for us. What else have we got on here? We've got some, I don't know what's going on there. That's interesting. Uh, but we have got three options. So let's see what it actually let us choose from. So we've got that. That's quite nice. I like this stuff up here. That's cool. Um, ooh, decisions, decisions. So we could generate again. Uh, but if you guys are using Photoshop and you're using any of these sort of generative things, be warned, you're using credits. For, uh, Adobe don't make this apparent. Anything generative you do through Firefly, through uh, Illustrator, uh, text to vectors, um, through generative fills, through removal tools, it's costing you a credit. Okay, you have 1200 credits to go at per month. As far as I'm aware, that's what we have on our accounts here. I'm assuming it's the same for everyone. It's like a standard thing. So every time you do something like this, you lose a credit. Okay, I know your <laughs> it's like in-game purchases, isn't it? You, you buy the damn game, and then you got to buy things in the game to make it work properly. Same thing here. Uh, but anyway, let's enough of a rant. Let's go with this middle one. And what we'll do is we'll just merge that down because you know I'm quite happy with that as it is. We'll convert that to a smart layer, smart object. Good, because we're going to do filters, and I'm not sure whether the filters are actually going to do what I want. So again, as before, let's see if Photoshop can colour this in for us without us having to work too hard. So we'll go Neural Filters. JPEG Artifact Removal. Let's do that first of all. We want to get rid of the JPEGiness. Cropped. I don't know whether we cropped that exactly right there. I'm not going to worry about it now, but we might have to fix that in a minute. Let's do something weird down that sort of right hand side. So we'll check that in a second. Let's let it do its thing. That looks good. Uh, okay, well, it looks exactly the same as before, but if you zoom in, that's when you see the difference. Like we say, as before, zoom in. All that JPEG artifact removal is doing is getting rid of the JPEGiness, the artifacting. So if we switch it off, we were there. Look at all this JPEG business happening here. We'll switch it back on again, and that all disappears. But anyway, let's see how quickly Photoshop can color that in. Let's move it over so you can actually see it. There we go. All we're going to do is turn on colorize. Fingers crossed, everybody. Hope for the best. Beautiful. There we go. We didn't do anything. It just did it. Okay. Uh, but I think the car needs to be a bit brighter than that. I like the road. I like what it's done there with the blue, and I like the red up here, and I like what's happening there. The sky looks nice. But you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll just add in some red color dots here. So we'll go back to our main image, and we'll click, and let's let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go bright red. Why not? Or even like a bright red pink. I don't like bright red on its own. I like more of this magenta -y red. This. Come on. There, yeah, it's added a bit in. Brilliant. Let's bring that color strength up. Come on, Photoshop. Get in a load of pink. There we go. Well, I'll put some more of these color dots down. Okay. Yeah, it's, just, it's doing a thing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let's add some more of those in. Let's see what it can do. It's designed for faces and stuff, really, and people. Like I said, this is the first time I've tried it with something like this. Okay, that looks kind of sort of interesting. Maybe we want a bright yellow headlight on there. So we'll put one of those in there, and that can be yellow. Let's see what it does to that. Boom. Nice. Maybe something on the windshield as well. Let's put um, one there. Not yellow. Turquoisey type colors. Do, 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 do. Somewhere around that. Yeah. Okay. We'll add a few more of those in. Let's have another yellow headlight. Okay. Yeah. I can see where it's going. It's, that that pink is probably not helping us, but um, because it doesn't tone with the rest of the image, it looks a little bit strong here. So maybe we bring the colors down in it, but it can definitely do it. It's definitely doing something. And we'll try it on another image in a minute because I really have absolutely no use for this car on anything at the moment. We'll add some more of the blues in, come on. Yeah, maybe, I'll tell you what, maybe if we change the the um, lights to blue as well. The yellow's kind of clashing for me. I don't like it. Let's put some more blues in down here. Yeah, there we go. Cool, and maybe another one over here. Yeah, I might, yeah, I may have made a mistake there. Maybe we need to go back to yellow headlights or something similar, maybe not quite as yellow. Boom. All right, that'll do. 
Same here with this one. Maybe put more of a greenish tint onto it. Yay, there we go. But again, we've got an image coloured up pretty quick. It's not brilliant. It's not perfect, but it's something. It's more than we had before. And again, the road here, maybe we want to put some of the yellow reflecting on the road. So let's add a, a couple of the... Oh, uh, just one click. It's changed the whole thing. <laughs> I actually really like that. I like what it's done there with the reflection. That's cool. I wonder if we can do the same with some of these pinks and put those underneath the car. Yeah, interesting. The colour's way too strong on that. Though. Let's knock it back. I'm just always intrigued how far we can push these things and, you know, what some of this stuff, how the limitations of it. Oh, that's that's um, that's too strong. I like it. It's too strong there. Let's knock it back a bit. Good. All righty. OK, that's not looking too bad. Maybe some of that blue needs to come up here into the background as well. We need to drop like a blue up the top there. Just to drop a bit of colour in there. Maybe on the right, this is looking a bit washed out over here. It's a nice framing going on. That red's clashing a little bit now. Maybe we change that to blue as well. And then the only thing that's pink is the car. Cool. Uh, okay, I like I like what's happening now. You know what? That's good enough for what we're doing today. I'm, I'm quite happy to leave it at that. Let's try a different image, shall we? Uh, but I'll tell you what, let's, let's scroll down. Before we move on, let's see if we can do anything with the saturation down there. Oh, actually, no, let, let's not. Because we've got adjustment layers. Let's click OK on that. I always forget the adjustment layers, even though they're my favorite thing in the world. Uh, let's go down to the adjustment layer settings and we'll put a color lock upon. Let's do the same as before. Let's try and keep consistency. So three strip pops the colors, duplicate it because I think we need to put some warmth and um, sort of uh, realism on it. That's the word I'm looking for, uh, because I think that's what the candlelight kind of does for us even if we just use it very, very subtly. Okay, too much, but it, that looks nice as well. However, it's not what I'm after. Let's knock it back. So it's more kind of realistic there. Yeah, 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 I like that. Good. And because this is quite a dynamic picture, let's add something else on here. Okay. It's kind of very nice. It's very flat, though. Let's do some blurs on here. We did this on Tuesday, actually, um, when we were mocking up a garment to make it look more realistic. So what I'll do here is go back to those filters, not neural filters for this one. I'm going to go down to the blur gallery and do a field blur. I like field blur because it means you can drop little blur pins wherever you want it to be blurry. So I want that to be blurry. I want this to be blurry. And let's move it over so you can all see it. There we go. I want this to be blurry down here. I want that to be blurry. Maybe down here I want it to be like super blurry. But in the middle, where the car is, I do not want it to be blurry at all. So I'll bring that one back. So it's a little bit like a tilt shift blur on here. Maybe we'll bring... Yeah, yeah let's put a real big blur up there. And we'll have another blur down here, which is not quite as blurry, but still blurry. Maybe over the top of the car. Interesting. So, like I said, I'm just messing around here. I'm just trying some new things. Never really had a chance to really play with some of these tools properly. So this gives me a bit of experimentation time. Too blurry. Cool, I like it. All right, let's go with that. So basically, we've got, if we zoom in on it, just so you guys can see it. Um, yeah, there we go. So we've pretty much gone from the basic black and white image to full on, almost full on coloured up with some blurriness in there. And that didn't take a lot of effort, did it? You know, that was a couple of clicks. That was that was not painful at all. Um, and it just makes everything look better. Uh, yeah, let's save that one as well. I'm going to throw these out on Instagram and X at some point just so everyone can see them. You can probably have a closer look over there. Uh, let's do another one. Like I say, today's stream is probably going to be pretty short because this is just so easy to do. You know, we, we don't have to do anything. Um, let's do, uh, I'm thinking her. She's kind of a cool robot type thing. Sort of a mech type character. Uh, what, what else could we do? Yeah, let's go with her um, for now. I, do we need to upscale you? Yes, we need to upscale you. But again, because it's so quick, we're just going to tell Adobe Bridge to show us that in Finder. <laughs> Look at him. everything's all over the place now. Uh, we'll just do a quick actions on that one. Do, 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 do. Convert the image. Yes to a JPEG, please. And then we'll go back and then we'll right click and then we'll go to open in camera raw. Same as before. 
right click, enhance, super resolution, enhance, and open. Whenever you do stuff like this, you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, but just for different stuff, okay? So again, for this one, we'll just repeat the process. Let's see how well Photoshop can color this one in. Let's see if it can do it even quicker without us having to do anything at all. Um, come on, Photoshop, do you reckon you can do it? So neural filters again, move it over there. Uh, this one is put a blue box around it because it's picking up on the skin smoothing one. So if you've got a photo, it picks up on faces and it smooths out skin and makes things look perfect. There's a lot in here for sort of photo retouching, skin smoothing, smart portrait, makeup transfer, those sorts of things. Makeup transfer is quite funny, actually. So if you've got a picture of somebody with no makeup on and then you get a picture of somebody with lots of makeup on, you can take the makeup off of one person and put it onto the other person. When I was messing around with this quite a while ago, uh, we actually got a picture of someone like a clown with clown makeup on. And we also did it with the Joker as well. We got a picture of the Joker, took the makeup off, off the Joker and put it onto just a normal person. Works brilliantly. It's worth just messing around with. But anyway, I'm, I'm probably going to skip the uh, JPEG artifact removal because I think this one actually looked not bad. Oh, it's a bit. OK, let's do it. Why not? We'll switch it on. 20 seconds. Come on, Photoshop. You can do it quicker than that. But again, Apple seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, right. Photoshop, how quickly can you colorize this? Right, let's go to colorize it. Click it. Boom. We have color. I think we don't need to, that one's not looking too bad actually. I like the red it's putting in and this green tone it's putting in on the armor here. That's looking pretty cool. Let's go down. Let's put the, um, let's just bring a bit more saturation through to this one. Let's bump it up a bit more. Come on, Photoshop. More saturation. Come on, Photoshop. All the saturations. Yeah, that's looking good. Uh, we'll do the same again. Yeah, lots of saturation. I like that. Uh, I'm, it's looking a bit too warm. So again, let's, Take the cyan, make it more cyan orientated so it cools it down. Maybe a bit more green. Let's go that way. Let's try that. And then should we have less or more yellow? Let's have a let's let's go this way. Yeah, that's looking interesting. Maybe the cyan's just gone too far. We'll bring that back. Here's what it is. Just be subtle. Don't don't get don't go mad with it. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. You know, this kind of yeah. It's done it. Let's click OK. Sometimes we just don't need to do it work that hard. You know, let's just let Photoshop do it. And we didn't make a smart object on there. That's my bad. Oh, dear. Uh, I need to. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> again, let's do a color look up on here. I think same as before. They seem those sort of combinations seem to work. Let's do a three strip to make the colors pop. And then we'll do another one of those. We'll duplicate it. And again, I don't know whether we go candlelight or let's try something else. Let's try see maybe teal. OK, that's interesting. That's giving it more of a vintage look, hasn't it? Um, but again, when if you're ever messing around with this stuff, this is just something I do. Uh, alter the, the opacity on the layer that's got the effect on it. See what it does, you know. Take it down, take it up and then try the blend mode. Uh, these all change how that layer is interacting with everything else. So we can come through here and just scroll through just to see how the interaction works because you can get some really cool effects just by doing this. You know, that's adding in more contrast, that's soft light. Now, these all do have specific uses, okay? Um, however, that doesn't mean we can use, can't use them for other things. So let's go back up. Normal, I'm thinking, let's see, that one's lightens quite nice. Let's turn it off. Yeah, interesting. OK, I'm going to leave that one there and let's have another one. Let's just duplicate the layer again and let's put it back to normal and then we'll, do, we'll put our candle light um, effect on it and then we'll knock it back. Oh, candle light's not working for this. Mm, interesting. It's not giving me the effect I want. OK, OK, let's bring it all the way back up. Let's try that with a blend mode. That's kind of interesting. Quite like that. That was the dot. Oh, Lighten. What are you? Lighten seems to be the one to go with today. Yeah, interesting. 
Good. All right. I'm, I'm thinking lighten for this one. So just kind of did. No, this is why we always go back and switch it on and off because <laughs> it might not be, be as good as you think. Uh, let's try drop blues. No. And let's put it back onto normal, actually. No, normal. Good. So once you know where to go for these things, just in case of messing around with it, just see what it does. What about another three strip look? Does that help? Not bad. It's putting a lot more green in it. OK, I quite like the green. Two strip. No, you can kind of lose everything when you do that one. Um, crisp warm. No, too warm. Edgy ambers is going to go really orange. That's fine. Film stock will put a lot of white and contrast in it. But again, you could use that with a blend mode just to knock it back. Yeah, I think that's too strong. Okay, fine. Um, foggy night. Yeah, again, interesting effect there, but it's not what I want. Uh, it'd be nice. Again, Photoshop, Adobe Teams, if you're listening, it'd be nice to preview these before we actually click it. Yeah, futuristic bleak looks a bit too bleak. Horror blues is just going to go more bluey. Although, yeah, it's not bad again. See, we can preview all of these. Why can't we preview all of these? Uh, yeah, you know what? I think the horror blues look okay. It's just I only need a hint of it. So what I might do here is do an advanced blend mode on it. So let's double click on it. And then we get this. This is our layer styles. Where can I put that where it's not going to get in the way? Just over there. Perfect. Oh, well, that fits perfectly. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll get the colors interacting down here. So let's bring the whites up. I like the blue on here. I'm quite happy with that. I want to bring more of the white through, though. OK, so what I'll do is where it says underlying layer, if I bring that down like that, it's going to bring through the white tones for me. So I do want to split it, though. Uh, yoink. So just hold down your alt or slash option key for that one just to make it a bit more subtle. So we'll bring that down. We'll bring that one down as well. Preview on or off. You see how it's brought through the whites on there so they pop a little bit more. Uh, it's basically just making the whites blend up through everything else. Just got to watch where the blue on her armor here blends in. If I go too far, it becomes a bit harsh. Cool. I'm happy with that. That looks good. You know what? From start to finish, what, how long did that take? Um, less than two minutes. So can't complain. Let's save it. Uh, like I said, today's live stream is going to be pretty short. However, let's do another one. Let's hit that hour mark at least. Let's do one more. Um, so what we'll do there is go back to bridge. Let's pick one more. What shall we go with? Um, I'm thinking, do, 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 do. let's go down to, we did a car. The car looked pretty cool. Uh, happy with that one. Did we do, we didn't do, yeah, we did do, actually, we did that at the start. What are we talking about? Um, I think we then do, what about this one? Shall we give that one a go? Shall we see if that one will work? I think we'll give this one a go because this is kind of that halfway between uh, sort of photorealistic, uh, comic book-ish, illustrative. It's got that whole kind of a bit of everything going on. So again, I think, are we going to have to upscale this? Yeah, we are, aren't we? Come on, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. You know, let's not, let's, let's just do it. Um, Right, where is it? Where are you? Uh, we've got so many things in here now. Um, there it is. So we'll right click again, quick actions, convert image to a JPEG, convert the image. In reality, what I should do is just select the whole lot and convert them all to JPEGs in one go. That's called planning ahead. And we haven't done any of that today. Um, I, it, I didn't plan ahead at all. And you know what? Because I didn't plan ahead, you know that camera that's behind me here? Check it out. Look what happens. It's all kind of... Well, it's not doing it now. It was doing it a minute ago. It was losing connection and it was like being all jittery and awful. Yeah, it's smooth that now. OK, well done, camera. Good job. You sorted yourself out. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's leave it there for a second. Let's go back to our image, jump back to bridge. Um, and what we'll do is we'll right click on that JPEG like that. And then remember, open in camera raw. And all you have to do here is again right click on your image and go down to enhance click on that there we go 
Remember, super resolution, that's all you're looking for. Dead simple, make sure it's switched on, click enhance. If it can't do it, it will tell you, we'll click open, that will throw it straight over to Photoshop. Good, and let's bring you guys back to the desktop. There we go, there's our image. Come on, Photoshop. Zoom in. We'll move you over there. Properties can stay there because we're probably going to use it again in a minute. And again, what we'll do is exactly the same as before. However, this time, however, this time, okay, we are actually going to remember to turn on the smart object layer. Remember that, all right? Right click on the layer, go down to convert to smart object, okay? Don't forget to do that. It's super important. So we'll do that now. Right click on the layer. Like I say, go down to. Uh, or up to, or wherever it happens to be on the layer. It would help if I actually clicked on the right window. There we go. The convert to smart object. And then we'll go back to our filters. Same as before, neural filters. And then, shall we see how fast Photoshop can do this? I'm not going to do anything. I'm literally going to click colorize. Let's see what happens. Boom. Does it. We have a colored image pretty much ready to rock. OK, this again is that quick. I love this tool, especially for black and white images and um, classic illustrations and anything like that. You know, you might have black and white artwork you've just drawn or inked or penciled out or whatever. Throw it in here. See what it can do. Um, I'm thinking, though, what we need to do is tweak the colors on this just a little bit. Maybe bring a saturation up. Boom. Nice. I like it. Um, yeah, I think what this dark blue that it's putting in around the outside here, we can probably fix that in, pho uh, in Photoshop. We're in bloody Photoshop anyway. But we can probably fix it in the layers afterwards, just doing like a, a hue saturation or levels or something like that. OK, um, so let's see what else we can do here. See if we can alter that color balance at all. But oh, no. Oh, no, definitely not. A uh, bit more blue. OK, they're, they're bringing it a bit actually more blue and actually helps balance the image out. Um, maybe we'll put a little bit of hint of magenta in there as well. And then bring the cyan up more towards the reds again. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. Um, sometimes you have to squint at these things just to get the right kind of levels. Yeah, a bit more saturation. It's the blue in the background that's throwing me, so I might bring that back down again. Cool. I'm happy with that. We'll click OK. I know I didn't do the JPEG artifact removal. We can always add that on afterwards because this is a smart filter and smart filters will let us do it. So let's use our favorite filters again. Let's go down to um, color lockup again. Let's do let's do our usual set, shall we? Because they seem to work really well for us. Uh, we'll go into three strip luck. Pops the colors. OK, maybe pops it a little bit too much, but we'll duplicate it. I will have another one. A candlelight seems to be working for us, so maybe we go straight into candlelight and we just cool it down a bit. We just go, look, candlelight, you're great, but you're not that great. Let's bring you back down. Look at that. Brilliant. Cool. Yeah, good. Let's just quickly try a bit of a blend mode on that as well. See if it can help us. Uh, can't, yeah, this lighter colour seems to do something. However, ooh. Yeah, now you see divide. That's giving us a whole different look to it, isn't it? Um, but we don't like that. I don't. Well, I do like it, but I don't want it for this image. Pin light is kind of okay. I think we put it back to normal. But we'll just knock it back just a little bit more. And I think we need another kind of adjustment layer over this. I think. Well, I need to get rid of that blue. That that's the bit that's bothering me. So I'm probably going to get rid of that with uh, nothing from there, but back down to the adjustment layers and i'm thinking for this one we use hue saturation okay let's use hue saturation and see if it can isolate that blue it might get rid of this thing in her hair as well but we'll see okay so what we'll do again you guys get a better view when you're kind of thrown over to the other camera can you see that there you everything looks better on that camera look how nice that looks cool and i can look at that and think yeah we're not too far off where we need to be that's not looking too bad um but to actually do some proper work, let's come back to the desktop. Come on, desktop, back you come. So we were going to do a hue saturation. Uh, remember, if you're using this, click the little wavy finger icon, 
click on the color you're trying to change, it will lock it to that part of the color spectrum, and then you can take the saturation down on it. That, that's much better. That is much better. Maybe we'll bring the uh, lightness down as well. That's looking pretty cool. We can also here, we see where it's locked itself to the color spectrum. I might bring that down. Just a, just a, just a teeny, you remember that designer kind of psh, uh, measurement, a smidge? I think that needs to go at least a smidge and a half down in like that. So we're just really focusing it down to the color we're actually trying to change. Let's see whether we can bring this down because I do like all of the other colors in here. It was literally just that one navy color I didn't like. Yeah, there we go. The purple's coming back into the hair now. Good. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. That's not looking too bad. And then what I will do on top of that, I'm wondering whether we do some curve action on here. But anyway, let's turn off a couple of these. Let's see if that we're actually improving it. So color look up, make the colors pop. Candlelight, knock it back a bit. This uh, hue saturation, knock it back a little bit more. And that might give us scope to bring candlelight back up again. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not looking for too bad. Um, quite like the realism in our hair on this one because it's all like nice browns and brown tones. Uh, that's good. But we could go back into this um, filter down here. And if we wanted to have our pink hair or blue hair or green hair, we could add that in as well. So even though this was like super quick in doing its recoloring, we could go back in and change it as well. I think we leave it alone there. Okay. I like it. Let's just save it. Another one down. And I think let's finish with just one more, shall we? Let's just do one more. I'm kind of, I'm liking what's happening here and I just want to carry on with it. Um, like I say, I'm just having a little bit of fun just messing around with these things. Uh, so let's choose another one. Um, I'm thinking for this one, we've got her here in the car, driving the car. So we did a car, we've done people. What about a person in a car? Can it do a person in a car? And how, what will it do? What will it see? How will it do it? I don't know. Let's, let's just, just go through the process. We're going to right click. We'll go down to um, opening camera raw. And we'll right click on the image. And we'll go enhance. No, enhance. <laughs> there we go. Enhance. Thank you. And we'll click open. Like I say, these images, I really don't have any intended use for any of these at the moment. However, I just want to see what happens with some of this stuff. Uh, I'm intrigued. I like messing around with just different filters just to see what the effects can be. Because, you know, they might be useful later on when I'm trying to develop something else. So what we'll do, right click, convert to smart object. Okay. I didn't have to remind myself then. I just went straight to it. You see, so I reminded myself earlier on and it worked. Okay. So, yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into those filters. Neural filters. Good. JPEG artifact removal. Again, I, I'll do that later. I'll add it on afterwards. That's boring. Let's just go to colorize and let's see what it does. Boom. Colors it. Skin tones are in there. It's decided she needs a pink top on. Uh, great. Great. <laughs> Well, what can I say? It's just, we don't need to do a lot with this, do we? Um, the only thing I, I don't like, we've got pink bleeding through onto her neck here coming from the top, so we'll probably fix that. Her hand is also very blue, so maybe we need to bring some of those skin tones down here. So let's add those in. I'm gonna click on the neck first of all. And let's mix that nice skin tone here again. It's, I'm kind of looking at the image to see if we can match roughly to that. Boom, not bad, not bad. Maybe bring that down just a little bit there. We might need more than one of these. Yeah, let's just bring the strength down. And we'll add another one in just there. Maybe bring the strength up on that one. I know we'd get reflections of you know lights and stuff, but you know, it's kind of a comic art-esque manga type thing. So we're not gonna worry about too much realism on here, okay? Obviously we want a bit of realism, but we don't, we don't have to worry about it too much. Let's put one of those on hand as well. Okay, so it's tonal matching it. Okay, that's fine. Maybe we'll bring that up just a bit. You know, it is darker here anyway, so I can understand that being darker. Um, what else can we change? A jacket's looking kind of cool. Um, 
yeah what about what else shall we put on here i'm just wondering whether we change the color of this jacket tell you what let's scroll down before we do anything else let's bring the saturation up on here let's just bring the saturation up overall because that can have a massive bearing on stuff okay um okay so we've got the headliner up here on the car that's kind of maybe we need to put some color up there i don't know uh, let's just bring uh, you know what we could do let's do some lighting effects um um or some more of those blur effects over on the other filters maybe we'll bring it down so we just cool it down a little bit then we'll go down here like this oh yeah interesting yeah yeah i like what's i'm wondering whether we put color in our hair or not let's try it let's try making their hair our color okay let's put in she's got a big ponytail at the back here so we can barely see it so let's put a color in there what color hair can she have? You know, it is comic book, so we can have any color hair we want. Shall we go pink, but then it's going to clash through the jacket? Shall we go blue, but then it will just look maybe a bit strange? I'm thinking pink, and then we change the color of the jacket to something else. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether that's working. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. That's just, no. Well, maybe... <laughs> this is where we've got to work out whether it's working or not okay let's bring the strength down we can turn off auto color here in that way when we if we do that it gets rid of all the coloring that photoshop's put on there but i kind of like what the bits that photoshop's done so I'm, i don't really want to switch that off let's bring that down here that's that's okay but i do think the color is probably too bright and poppy which is why it's having a problem with it yeah that's yeah that's better knocked it back a bit um again we could change the color of a jacket to something else maybe uh, i do like the red though but just just so you guys can see let's just click on a shoulder let's make it blue i don't think we need to go with blue but let's see what it looks like anyway yeah it's kind of it's doing a thing isn't it yeah okay that's not offensive by any means Maybe that bit on her shoulder there. Let's bump the colours up on that. Yeah, this is looking like another one I did before quite a while ago. Yeah, okay. Maybe it could be like a couple of characters doing similar things. Um, can you see how through the kind of the panel of the car here, there's a tiny bit of red over on the left here, but it's kind of going blue here. So I think we need to add another one on. Let's continue that red through. Then it sits on her shoulder. The shoulder shouldn't be red, it should be blue. So let's grab a blue and put it on her shoulder. Like that. Yeah, and her nose is very red. You guys probably can't see that as well though, but her nose is pretty red and we probably need to knock that back. So let's grab one of these skin tones. I mean, it's not offensive, but it's fine. I just think it's too strong. So maybe we drop one of those skin tones on there. It could kill it completely. Even, yeah, maybe that's not what we need to do. But again, this is all trial and error. Try things. It's what it's all about. Just if it don't work, undo it. Step backwards. Whatever. Okay. Um, I think again, we're nearly there. Maybe in the rearview mirror, we put kind of a reflection of something in there. Can you see that? Let me move you over a bit. There we go. So down here on this uh, mirror, I think maybe we need a color reflection on there. So maybe we do that. Let's let's grab one, shall we? Let's put one in there. What should we put in? That's a blue. However, I'm thinking maybe we need some like contrasting colors. Where's the red one gone? The red one has disappeared. What's happened, Photoshop? Did you do something? Oh, Photoshop's done something and got rid of one of my um, pins that I put down. Damn you, Photoshop. How dare you have a mind of your own. Um, yeah, I put a red one down here, Photoshop. Where's it gone? I didn't tell you to undo it. Thank you. And I also put a blue one on your shoulder. Photoshop's making decisions on its own. Um, yeah, because that's quite bright white, it's not really adding a hell of a lot of colour to that. Yeah, I don't know whether I like that. I might just leave it a white. Again, we can just remove these. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go with that. That looks good. You know, for a couple of clicks, it's fine. We'll click OK. We can't see your head. Come back. Come back over this way. Come on, back over. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll go through our usual set of filters. Now, I should have these set up so I can copy and paste them. Um, but let's go through our adjustment layers. We'll do a whoop, color lookup. 
Again, let's go through my favorites. Three strip look, pop the colors. Next one, candlelight might work quite well on this. And I'm thinking we do some blurriness on here as well. Uh, but anyway, what am I doing? Duplicate layer, there we go. And this one could be candlelight again. Boom, knock it back. Like I say, doing that just adds a little bit of realism to it. I think she's got a bit of red going on in her face is too much of it. So let's go back to those neural filters. Let's adjust it. Let's double click. I think that skin tone that we had in there, we need some more of it on her face. Because she's looking a bit flushed. So let's bring that skin tone color up a bit, shall we? There we go. We'll have another one of those on her face. It's kind of doing something. Not a lot. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Bring the colors up. You have to play around with the color strengths on here just to get it working properly. That's that's fine. That's helping a little bit. It's got a bit of patchiness on her neck here. It almost feels like you're fighting Photoshop because Photoshop's trying to color this in as well as you. That's why auto colors on are is switched on and it's like you're doing something photoshop's doing something and you're like battling for who's gonna get there first all right so that that's okay i can kind of live with that for now these are just test images so i'm not going to worry about it too much it's just playing that's all this is but what i will do is the same as we did with the car a second ago let's do that blurriness because i quite like that for this sort of thing so we did a field blur before if I click that, it's going to reapply the, the other one. I want to do a new one. So maybe we let's try tilt shift, shall we? Let's do that one. Let's go into tilt shift because we want to convey this feeling of speed and nothing shows speed like it being blurry. OK, <laughs> okay. so again, we've got the blurriness on here. There we go. We've got the amount of distortion we can do. Now, I believe, come on, where's my rotation thing? We could rotate this. Why are you not giving me my rotation options? Uh, no, I don't want that. That can go away. No, don't come out of it. Ooh, stop being an idiot, Photoshop. Go back in. Come on. Oh, I think we've broken it. There we go. Uh, yeah, we don't want that one. We've got two on here now. We only want this one. We should be able to rotate this. Now, Photoshop, why are you not giving me my rotate on here? We should be able to rotate this one. Hmm, interesting. Why are you not letting me do it? Hmm, Photoshop's doing something weird. <laughs> All right, let, let's work with what we've got then. Okay, let's, let's not fight it. Let's work with it. There should be a rotation option on here. I wonder if this is linking to the... Um, yeah, I wonder what's going on with that. Okay, fine. We've got some motion effects on here and noise we can mess around with. Uh, let's just go with the effects. Let's do the bocker on here. Let's bring that up. Let's see if that has any effect on our image at all. I don't think it will, but yeah, it's worth a try. I want some major blur on this. Yeah, that's looking good. It's going to annoy me now. We should be able to rotate this around. Um, light bocker. I have loads of light bocker. Yeah, ah, look at that. That looks cool. I think we might be able to do that with that car one as well. Let's bring the light range down a bit as well. So let's get it working a bit more over things. Yeah, I like that. Good. Uh, let's bring the light bocker down because it's obviously getting a little bit carried away there. I like how it just pops just a little bit there. Beautiful. Okay. What happens if we bring the blur all the way up? What's it going to do? Okay, it's going to do that. Good. So this is, like I say, just experimentation. Just have a play around with it. See what it can do for you. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit more. Let's bring some more color into this. Come on. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, that's good. All right, let's go with that. Uh, shall we do another one? Shall we do another one? Maybe we do the field blur as well. Or shall we do it instead of? Let, let's do it as well. Let's bring that up here. And we'll take it uh, down. We want her face to actually be in focus, but everything else doesn't have to be. Because if we put this blur in certain places, it's going to pick up on that bocker effect and make these kind of highlights pop as well. 
like that. Yeah, there we go. See how it's popping now in lots of different places. That's interesting. That's an interesting effect. I've never really played around with that, but yeah, that's definitely doing something interesting for us. And if you take it down, it seems... Let's add another one here. Let's take you down there. Yeah, okay. I like that. Okay, I'm going to go with that. It looks cool. Sorry, I don't know that one. No one's talking to you, Alexa. Shut up. I hate it when Alexa does that. She just butts in for no apparent reason at all. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, that looks pretty good. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, I think that's looking interesting. It's doing a thing that I quite like. So don't forget, we started kind of here. If I go back to my filters, we'll switch everything off apart from this one. We started there, okay? And with no filters, turn the filters off. This is where we started. So we're now here with the, with the filters. Then we did our little color adjustments over the top. And we've got a pretty good image. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's put you guys on the other camera because that always has a different uh, kind of bearing on it. Okay, let's bring you over there. Uh, where's, my, where's my button? Where's my button? There you are. Yeah, okay, there you go. You can see that down there. Look at that. Um, that's not looking bad. Let's zoom in on it, shall we? So we, you can... I didn't mean to click that. That's that shortcut again. That is the same Photoshop as it is in OBS. I'm not playing the credits just yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hate it when he does that. Um, there we go. That's not looking too bad. That's looking pretty good. Um, you know what? We could go like super cheese with this. All right. The, the filter that everybody... Well, that did a weird thing to my microphone when I did that. Uh, that weird... Um, that filter that everybody uses when they first start out in Photoshop, okay? You know what it is, okay? I don't have to explain myself. You know what it is, okay? So quickly put in the comments what you think I'm going to go to. The cheesiest, worst filter that everyone learns to use straight away. Come on, I'm going to give you three seconds. You know what it is, okay? You know what filter we're going to use. It is lens flare the best and the worst and most cheesiest bestest filter you you know of okay everyone knows this uh so let's go back to the desktop let's try it let's see if we get a bit of lens flare on here shall we um so let's go to the filters uh we're gonna go down to render and lens flares oh i've not used lens flares for a long time oh my god um <laughs> all right <laughs> let's, uh, let's put a lens flare. I don't know. Where should we put it? Um, pew, pew, pew. Uh, maybe there. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, this is like pure nostalgia now. Let's do that. <laughs> uh, we'll do a 35 mil one. What else have we got? 105. Yeah, see, that's 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 kind of, kind of too... Um, it's too respectable, that one. is. That, that one's probably will work the best. I'm just reflecting off her mirror there. I kind of like that, actually. Uh, naff as it is. Um, <laughs> what else have we got? Oh, oh, my God. I forgot about these. Oh, God. Um, you see, that's got a, something as well. Yeah, I think that one kind of works best. Can we? I can't remember whether we can do this or not, but can we layer up lens flares? I've not done this for so long. Um, let's try. Let's try putting another one on. Yeah, okay, lens flare is there, but will it let us do another one? I'm going to go back to filters because it's a smart object. It might, it might not. I don't know. We'll give it a go because you can never have enough lens flare. Uh, we'll go back to render lens flare again. Is it going to do another one? Oh, yes. We get another one on here. Oh, wow. Let's do a movie one. Why not? If we're going to do lens flare. We're going to do it properly. We're going to go full... Um, uh, Michael Bay on this one. Let's put that one down there. Probably not as bright. You know what? If we're doing two, we might as well have three. So we'll do that. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Let, let's have another one. Uh, let's keep going. Let's have loads of lens flares on here. Let's go super cheese. Uh, Blade Runner style now. Let's put another one up here. Uh, this one could be 35 mil. What haven't we used yet? So... 35 mil, is that going to be too much, do you think? Do you think that's going to be, like, too over the top? You know, I don't think you can go too over the top with the lens flare. If you're going to do it, you got to do it properly. you got to, like, go... There we go. Full Blade Runner. No, I don't like that one, though. That's too much. 
Not that one. Yeah, you see, I'm, I'm drawn to it. I'm drawn to the 35 mil one. Let's go with it. And we will turn it down a bit. Let's be subtle with the cheesiness. All right, we just need the Starship Enterprise flying over in the background there to finish this off. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking, I think. But before I say anything about it, I think, okay, let's go back down to um, our layers. Let's turn a few on and off. Let's turn some of these lens flares off. Let's see if they actually have improved our artwork. Uh, you know what? I think any sort of lens flare improves an artwork. So the first one did a little pop on the mirror there. I do like that. The second one was that movie one. Boom. I do like that one as well. And the third one was up there, up here. I, I, you know what? You can't go wrong with that, can you? Just some lens flares. Yeah. You know what? We just by doing that, I would say we have created the perfect artwork, and it was just because of the lens flares. Um, let's save it. I don't want to lose this one. This one's going out on Instagram. You know, this is going to be like the the, the bestest post ever. It's going to get like a million likes. Beautiful. Okay, now I've done that though. I want to go back to that car that we did. Let me look at that. Beautiful. So let's just go go through where we started. We we did this. That's where we started, and then we kind of ended up here. But it's kind of I don't know how, what you how you describe it. It looks like a still from an anime again. Yeah, again we're going down this anime route type thing. I actually really like that now. Yeah. Before and afters. Yeah, it's cool. Right. I keep saying this is the last one. I think that one was the last one. However, I do want to go back to the car. Remember the car here? The car needs some lens flares. We haven't got enough lens flares on this one. We haven't got any lens flares on this one. We need some of the flariness. So let's... Shall we just go back in there? Let's add a few on, shall we? Let's go render. Lens flare. Uh... Where should we put the lens flares? I think you need definitely need one just shining off the front of the car there. Maybe one of those movie prime ones. Phew. Again, this would be nice if we could have a bigger preview here. Photoshop, Adobe, if you're listening. Big previews, please. Boom. Maximum cheese. Let's have another one. Uh, render, lens flare. I think we need one over here as well. So we'll have a 105mm one over here but i think we need one up here on this building as well oh uh, yeah which shall we yeah i think that one that we just had that's great this <laughs> is just you you know what these streams are like this is just me messing around i'm i'm having fun and i'm hoping you're just having, learning and picking up things as well as we go um lens flares i'm probably going to change my tone uh, on lens flares, maybe they do have a place in sophisticated artworks such as what we is making here. Um, yeah, let's bring that down. Okay, cool. Yay, look at that. Uh, because this is such an awesome artwork, shall we have another one just to finish it off? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we're establishing that you cannot have too many lens flares however before we do that i want to go back into my blur gallery on this one because one thing we didn't do on this one we didn't actually turn up the bocker effect on here so maybe we need to do that as well let's do it let's come on oh we've killed it now come on photoshop you can do it we have the spinning wheel of doom here there we go. If you guys ever get Spinning Wheel of Doom, do not do anything, okay? Let it catch up with you, uh, because eventually it will come back to life. If it doesn't, um, then you can quit it and restart it. But yeah, to generally let it do its thing and let it catch up again. So I'm trying to think and do things at the same time. Uh, there we go. So we could bring that all the way up like that. I think that's too much. We've got a lot of light tones in here, so... That's kind of where that's coming from. Okay, I don't know whether this is working for us or not. It worked really well on the last image. Do we do this? So it's out of the highlights and more down towards the lowlights, and it's kind of creating this really weird 
sort of effect. It's almost like an animation, isn't it? Like, yeah, okay, that's kind of interesting. Let's bring it up, lift it just a little bit out of the shadows. Um, we are not using this like it should be used. We're actually just creating some nice, interesting effects with it. Yeah, I think, yeah, somewhere down there actually looked pretty good. It looks like the road is wet now, doesn't it? It looks like it's got like that wet, shiny effect on it. Let's go with it. Let's save that. Let's see what it does. Because we've got our lens flares to put back on again as well. Yeah, it's not as good as the last one. Let's zoom out a bit. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm digging that Bokka type effect there. What happens if we turn the blur off altogether? Come blurring us. Go away. I think we're broken it. That's telling us, I think, um, kind of, uh, it's telling us it's had enough now. So maybe we need to just end it there for today before we kill absolutely everything. Come on, Photoshop, sort yourself out. Thank you. Yeah, I like the blur though. We'll put it back on and then we'll finish here for today. So, come on, catch up. So we've done a lot just with that neural filter, just doing a bit of recoloring on there and making it look awesome. Uh, I really like that. I wasn't expecting too much from that today, but it's, it's actually really worked and I'm super pleased with some of the things we've got there. Let's wait for this to catch up. We'll save it. And then for next time, okay, we are going to be doing monsters. Okay, so remember the monsters. Well, I'll quickly show you what the monsters were while Photoshop sorts itself out. Um, monsters were... Duh, 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 duh. Come on. Or maybe if you see something else on here that you know you you want me to do or see how it turns out remember we had a few that we were going to do we were going to go down that whole anime poster route so we were, were going to do tides of celebration make that work put some text on there make it look perfect we were also going to do or we'll also have in the pipe work um the anime poster here this one hasn't got a name yet i don't know what it's going to be called we can work into that one uh we have our architecture series that we're going to work into as well so again if you would prefer to see some of those drop it in the comments and i'll quite happily jump onto those because these all need doing anyway we have the initial j artwork which is a new one that i've been working on and that's this okay and it, it's kind of doing something like that but i want to do something with this i don't know what i want to do with it yet but it's definitely in the works Okay, so anything like this, let me know. Let's go to monsters. Monsters, where are you? Monsters, 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 monsters. There we go. There we go. So what we're going to be doing here is piecing these together to make a nice poster, sort of like this, but not like that. Uh, we've got our inspiration in a different folder. So there's lots of cutting out and piecing together. I think that'll look really cool. Um, yeah, so that, that's another one that's in the works, which might be for next Tuesday. I don't know yet. Keep an eye on the notifications uh keep an eye on instagram and uh x just to see what's happening over there and you can keep up to date with what's coming next i do have a tendency you probably realize by now I have a tendency to change my mind at the last minute um i just really felt like doing this today cool i like that that's good let's save it let's have a look at what we've done today when that's saved thank you very much and let's go into our black and whites so we have done that one that turned out pretty well and we also did this one we did the car we did this one these haven't got names yet um we did this one and that was all we did so we did those five today okay so let's just have a, a little look at some of these just to finish so go away magnifying glass all right so we had that one that looked pretty cool uh, would help if I had selected all of these and grouped them together. That one there looked pretty good as well once it was coloured up. And we had the car which we've just been looking at. That turned out really well actually. I'm super happy with that. Uh, we also had, just so you can see it close up again, this one here. Nice. And then that one there. That was probably my favourite. That turned out really well. Love that. Cool. So that's what we've done today. Love it. That's great. Um, oh, we did one more. We didn't actually save it though. Uh, where are you? Da, 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 da. This one. No. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Was it, was it this one? No. I had another one. Where did it go? No. All right. We lost it. It's in here somewhere. 
I don't know. Well, we'll put it out there on the X or somewhere. No, not you. We saw it. Okay. Oh, there we go. That one. We did that one as well, but we didn't save it. Now, that's why it's not showing up. Uh, so we did all of those. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, again, next stream is happening on Tuesday next week. Same time as always, half seven uh, British time. So whatever that translates to in 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 whatever part of the world you're in okay keep an eye on x okay F follow on there links are sort of down there in the description uh follow on instagram as well i don't do a lot over there i am hoping to revive it and also all the videos can be found on the website as well head over there look for the video section you can watch back on there as well and it'll all be listed okay as well as youtube so until next time uh have a great evening have a great weekend and i will see you next tuesday all right roll the credits